Seven years before the robbery, a man named Leo is seen in prison. He is making a butterfly shape out of a soap-like material. Besides that, you can see Judy making her own candy, and then Judy is seen meeting a man who is exchanging something for a number of SIM cards. Judy went to the prison with the candy and her SIM card. She bribed one of the wardens there to let her in. As it turned out, Judy came to visit Stan, who was in prison, and then Judy gave him a SIM card along with the candy she was carrying. After that, Stan distributed the candies to his friends in prison, and Stan did sell them to them. Besides that, you can see Leo, who is focused on writing a letter to Hannah, he is not at all bothered by any conditions around him. Then, Stan returns to the kitchen because he is in charge of cooking, he can be seen slipping a can of tin into a book. Shortly thereafter, he was approached by a very strong gang in the prison. The leader of the gang approached Stan and expressed his disappointment that he had given his phone to someone else. Stan was beaten until he was bleeding, but a few moments later Leo came to stop him. There, Leo asked the gang to stop the beating because Stan was his cellmate and he was worried that Stan, who was in pain, could disturb his rest time. The gang leader felt satisfied after hitting Stan, then he left the place, and Stan thanked Leo for helping him. Then in the prison cell, Leo was seen returning to writing another letter, but he couldn't focus because Stan kept on telling stories, at which point Stan really liked Judy and was very sure Judy was his soul mate, and then Stan gave Leo a book that had a tin in it. It turned out that Leo used the scrap of tin to make an object, which he shaped into a butterfly. But suddenly he felt his hands shaking, so he chose to take a rest. And not long after, when he fell asleep, Leo kept going delirious until he fell off his bed. It turned out that Leo's body was in pain. The next day, Leo was immediately taken to the prison clinic for examination, and the nurse asked him to wait for Dr. Warner. Meanwhile, during visiting hours, Stan met Judy again, and there Stan gave him a butterfly-shaped object made by Leo as a sign that he liked her. Then Judy informed Stan that the SIM card business would no longer be conducted due to numerous issues, Stan was pensive and perplexed. Back to Leo, who was being examined by Dr. Warner, he explained that the disease had not been detected, but based on the symptoms, he believed it was quite dangerous. In the middle of the doctor's trip, Leo just daydreamed like he had something planned. Later, while with Stan, Leo asks Stan to buy him nylon and lube, leading Stan shocked because he is sure that Leo is planning to escape. It turns out that it's true, Leo also invites Stan to come with him. However, Stan refuses because he only has a few months left to be released from prison. After that, Leo is seen stealing a soap to prepare his escape plan. Apart from that, Stan was visited again by Judy, who turned out to be carrying a man named Bob. There, Bob's unethical treatment in words made Stan angry, and he decided to run away with Leo because he was worried that he would lose Judy. Stan gave Leo the idea to forget about nylon and lubricant because he would make them using the mushrooms that he cooked to escape. The next day at the park, Stan started to carry out Leo's plan, he accidentally used a lawn machine and threw a rock to break Dr. Warner's car window. On the other hand, when he was seen at the clinic, Dr. Warner was very surprised. Leo immediately offered to repair his for free, and the doctor fell into his trap and agreed to Leo's offer. When Leo was ushered into the prison, he suddenly pretended to be ill and immediately put soap on the key hanging from the warden's waist to make a duplicate. After that, Leo started fixing the glass of the doctor's car, he was tinkering with the car so he could use it to escape, and at the same time Stan was making food, which he mixed with mushrooms. When finished, he gave the code to Leo and immediately continued the plan. Leo asked the warden to take him to prison, while Stan distributed food to all the prisoners. Not long after, Stan's concoction of mushroom dishes succeeded in making the convicts who ate the food act stupid. Drunk on mushrooms like an insane person, Stan immediately scraped his finger with a knife to rush to the clinic, where the condition of the inmates became worse, prompting the nurses, wardens, and guards to leave, and it was at this point that they took advantage of the opportunity to escape, and when they arrived at the last door and discovered that Leo was difficult to open, Stan backed off. He called back the wardens and intended to divert him, and he succeeded. Leo easily got out and immediately got into the trunk of Dr. Warner's car. Meanwhile, in the prison dining room, Dr. Warner explained that the inmates might eat mushrooms and asked the wardens to leave it alone for a few hours, it would be normal, and then Dr. Warner immediately went home without any suspicion, and then when he arrived at Dr. Warner's house, Leo rushed out of the baggage of the doctor's car panting for breath because he was almost out of breath, and he rushed to take the doctor's car to Ava's house. In the evening, Ava felt that someone was in her house, and evidently that was Leo, they immediately chatted casually. Leo said that before he left, he wanted to meet Hannah, who is Leo's daughter. At first, Ava refused because she felt that Hannah was fine, but Leo kept begging, so Ava helped him meet Anna. 
The next day, Hannah was seen working at a company in the field of security technology called Roger, and then when Hannah was alone outside, Leo ventured to meet her and asked her to talk. Leo said that during those 17 years, he missed Hannah very much, but Hannah was very upset because her father had just left her at that time. Hannah went back to the office. Leo, who was trying to chase Hannah, immediately fell silent when he saw Hannah talking close to Roger. You can see now that the police are gathered at Dr. Warner's house. There, the police are interrogating Dr. Warner, and one of the female police officers, named Abassi, asks a question that makes Dr. Warner offended. Abassi then goes and takes a kind of prescription letter belonging to Dr. Warner without anyone knowing. After that, Abassi and her police colleagues visited Ava to be questioned about Leo, where Ava said she had not seen Leo for a long time and that their last meeting was when Leo asked Ava to transfer him to another prison because he was the target of a white prison gang. Hearing that, Abassi arrogantly thought what Ava was saying was very funny, with this interaction leading to a debate between Ava and Abassi. However, she was stopped by her friend, who asked Abassi to go, and then she saw that Dr. Warner's car had been stolen and now burned to the ground by someone who had become a corpse. When the police checked it, the result was that it was Leo's body. Manipulating everything, and Leo's real name, Ray, is dead, and Leo's name is a fake identity created by Ava, but Leo insists on staying because Hannah is close to Roger Salas, which is also not his real name, it is known. It was Roger Salas who made Leo lose everything, and Leo didn't want to lose Hannah either. On the other hand, Hannah received a letter from Leo in which he said that there was another liar and that his guilt had to be made up, which was all caused by Roger Salas. Six weeks before the robbery a man named Leo is seen six weeks before the robbery, having just awoken from his sleep. Meanwhile, a woman named Hannah is seen, who meets a woman named Ken in a cafe and introduces herself as Laura, apparently, the meeting was not an accident but part of Hannah's plan. And then Hannah and Ken seem to be getting closer, so Hannah took advantage of this to carry out a plan to penetrate the security of a bank, which is also Ken's workplace. Hannah, with her intelligence, managed to penetrate the bank's security system. Because of the camera that she kept in the book that was given to Ken, after that, Hannah was able to break in using Ken's card, and then she managed to steal it from there. And she brought the loot with her boss, Roger, to be shown to a man named Stefan, and actually, Hannah and Roger deliberately stole from the safe to evaluate a rival's security system, to gain Stefan's trust so that Stefan uses Roger's security system. Moving on to Leo, who was visiting someone named Stan, who was his friend in the past when he carried out the robbery, Stan already knew Leo's intention to come to him was definitely to invite him to rob again, so Stan immediately said that it seemed he couldn't participate, but after hearing the very nominal amount of money, which made Stan interested, Leo explained that the place to be robbed was a vault with the most sophisticated security system, and it was in the center of the city. The security system must bypass sensors that are attached to a continuously running power supply and be connected to a military-trained security team. The money in the safe belongs to the Dragon Trio, which consists of Cho Hyun Woo, the main shareholder of Jongdo, the largest private bank in Korea, and Suzanne Grosvenor, chief banker at Duncan, and Stefan Thiele, a Swiss CEO of Bank Drenner. The three of them manage trillions of dollars in cash and agree with the vault owner to keep their money. The owner of the safe guarantees that the safe's security system is weather-resistant, shock-resistant, and even theft-resistant. And the owner of the vault system is Roger. Leo then plans to break into the safe and asks Stan to join him in looking for team members to carry out the big robbery. The scene moved to a Philadelphia police station, where it was seen that several suspects had just entered the station. There was a witness who was asked for testimony as to which of the suspects was really the culprit, and after that it turned out that the woman witness was Judy, a girlfriend of one of the suspects named Bob. The two of them met again at a nightclub, and it turned out that at the club there was also Stan waiting for them, it seemed that Stan already knew them well and immediately invited them both to meet Leo, who was there too. The meeting was held, and Leo immediately told of his plan to rob a safe of a lot of money. There, Judy and Bob were interested in participating, and they discussed how the results of the plan would be divided and what had to be prepared for that job. Bob volunteered to have him open the safe later, but Stan said that job was done by Leo, and Judy said that the security system of the safe was very sophisticated and would need a lot of equipment and strategies to do it successfully. Leo agreed with this, he also said that he had an insider from the owner of the system who would help them. On the other hand, Hannah was seen telling Roger that someone had hacked the system by using a whitelist application to gain access. Andrew, who was there, said, maybe it's just a random hacker, or maybe the Dragon Trio is testing the brand system. Hannah said that she had closed it, after that, Hannah asked about the position of junior deputy director. 
but Roger asked Hannah to just focus first, and then, when everyone had left the room, he ordered his right-hand man, named Carlos, to keep watching Andrew. Meanwhile, when Hannah returned home, she chatted with Liz at her house, and then Hannah tried her pregnancy, which resulted in Hannah being pregnant. The scene moves to Leo, who meets a woman named Ava. Ava shows him a place where there are lots of weapons because, according to Ava, equipping weapons in the robbery plan is very necessary for the success of this plan. The two of them then discuss the fact that they still need someone to be a driver. And then they went to RJ, where Ava immediately asked RJ about driving a car, so Ava continued to test him with a number of things that were essentially not driving an ordinary car, and RJ agreed. After that, Leo gathered the whole team and discussed the robbery plan. Leo said that Roger was very arrogant because he felt that money and technology could protect him. Leo actually felt that this was an opportunity for them to enter. Ava says that they need money to prepare everything, Bob tries to give advice, but they don't respond at all. On the other hand, Hannah reported to Roger that the security breach was seen by someone in the office. Andrew replied that Hannah should focus on her work, but Roger asked Hannah to continue investigating, and then Hannah told Rajiv that Andrew's behavior was very strange. Seen returning to Leo and the others, it appeared that they were analyzing horse race crashes for profit. But it turned out that the horse race was closed. Bob said, why do they not steal the diamonds? They agreed and immediately made a plan. The next day, they were all in their respective positions to carry out their actions, starting with Judy, who circled the city and stored smoke bombs in every trash can and detonated them. After everyone panicked, they broke in and attacked the security team there, and they stole a lot of diamonds. And when the time was up, they immediately left, but unlike Bob, he, who was greedy, still wanted to take more of the diamonds there, so he had to be shot by the security team there. And there was a little shootout between them. Fortunately, they were able to flee. And at the headquarters, Bob was being treated by another friend, where Stan really blamed Bob's actions for being greedy, he didn't want to listen to the instructions, so he had to be shot. Besides that, Hannah took Liz to work at a friend's place. Not long after, Hannah was called by Carlos to immediately meet Roger, where there seemed to be Rajiv and also Andrew. Roger explained that currently the position of junior deputy director was occupied by Rajiv, and he also discussed the security being hacked by an insider, for which he had the name of the culprit. It turned out that the evidence in Andrew's bag was on a flash drive. Andrew felt that he did not know anything, and after that, Roger immediately kicked Andrew out. And then Roger called Hannah and made Hannah replace Andrew as senior deputy director. On a different day, it was seen that Hannah met Leo, it seemed that Hannah was the insider that Leo meant for his team. There, Hannah said that she had gotten the position of deputy director but did not have direct access, and she doubted is everything going to be successful if they continued with their plan to rob the money of the three dragons, because it was very dangerous. Hannah also believed that even if she was successful in a robbery, she would lose her job. After hearing Hannah's doubts, Leo immediately convinced her that they had been planning it for years, so Hannah had to be optimistic in her duties. After that, it was seen that Leo and his team were focusing on their respective tasks to prepare everything. On the other hand, Hannah did that too, and you can see on her desk that there is a flash drive similar to the one found in Andrew's bag. It seems that it was Hannah who had managed to trap Andrew and get rid of him. Three weeks before the theft the scene shows how Anazan performs her duties when in the field as an FBI officer. She has a habit of always doing things according to the rules. Even here, she is an outstanding officer when she catches her target. And she is talking about that incident in the circle discussion forum that we usually see when someone has life problems. While at the office, Nazan meets another agent named Toby, shortly after, she is called by her boss to be told that her boss is targeting Ava in a diamond theft case. When she heard Ava's name, Nazan seemed to have unfinished business with Ava in the past. However, when it comes to catching Ava, Nazan's boss has yet to obtain solid proof. And then the scene moves to Ava showing Leo the results of her diamond theft. It turns out that Ava's stolen items will be a good cost for Leo's team to carry out the theft they are about to commit because, to dismantle sophisticated vaults, special equipment is required. And then Ava met with Bob, they were going to a place to sell the diamond. They received $400,000 in proceeds from the sale of diamonds. On the other hand, it turns out that Nazan has a son who is around 12 years old. It is also known that Nazan's household relationship has been divorced, so Nazan is trying to get custody of her child. The scene switches to Leo, who is chatting with the driver about the car they will use when committing theft. There was Stan, who was enjoying a meal while looking at Judy, who was busy doing something, not long after that, Ava and Bob came, carrying the money from the sale of diamonds. Leo immediately gathered his team and began dividing tasks to buy the tools they would use in the theft. 
The scene then shifts to Ava posing as a buyer on her way to buy an apartment, there, she meets Roger, who gives Ava his business card. Elsewhere, Mason is seen listening to Ava's recordings in the past. It seems that Ava was in a case and had dealings with Mason because it is also known that Ava is a famous lawyer. A few days later, finally, Mason's boss summoned Ava to be interrogated on the charges that the FBI had given her. During the interrogation, it turned out that Ava was prepared by the FBI, which could not put her in prison because Ava had a strong argument, namely that the bullets were found at the diamond theft. Even though there were Ava's fingerprints, Ava could explain that prior to the theft, she had reported it to the police that the gun had been stolen by someone, so that could be proof that the gun was stolen by someone from Ava. And then, after the incident, Ava immediately reported to Leo that she had been summoned by the FBI. Leo tried to advise Ava to be careful. After that, Leo's team started preparing for the theft they were going to commit, one of which was to buy a tool to find out the floor plan of the building they were targeting, namely the SLS office. Only by inserting a coin into the building's sewer and ventilation system did Leo's team learn the floor plan of the SLS office. The next day, Bob meets Ava at her house, as well as Nazan, who is watching across the street to see Ava's every movement, even though Nazan has been warned by her boss not to get involved in Ava's case. In the evening, Nazan meets Toby. Previously, Nazan was known as an officer who strictly obeyed the rules, but now Nazan is actually violating these rules by continuing to follow and investigate Ava's case. Toby tries to convince Nazan to stay confident in what she is doing. In the other place, Bob is seen with an injury to his hand while enjoying a drink at a bar. Not long after that, Judy and Stan come, and it seems that Bob feels jealous of Stan and makes Bob hit Stan. Even when the three of them came out of the bar, Toby was there and documented what was going on. After that, Toby reported what he found to Nazan, not only that, but Nazan also found a connection between Stan, who had been in the same prison as Leo when he was in prison, and several other team photos that were already there. And then, at a glance, it shows Ava and Toby getting closer, which seems like they love each other. At the team headquarters, Leo finally showed Bob a safe that Bob had to open later, and then Leo got a report from Ava that they had to meet as soon as possible. The scene showed that Toby was already at Ava's place, and Toby immediately reported that he was now at Ava's place. But Toby has other things to do, forcing Nazan to intervene. And then Nazan tries to follow where Ava is going. Actually, previously, Toby had warned Nazan that this could be a trap. And it turned out to be true, Nazan fell into the trap and was following the wrong person, especially when she pointed her weapon at the woman, who was wearing a white cloth. Moreover, suddenly there is a drug in Nazan's jacket. This incident made Nazan's custody disappear. Then Ava reported this to Leo, as if Ava had told him that Nazan had moved on from what they were doing. Leo thought Nazan was like a sleeping tiger and told Ava to stay away from the team. The next day, the woman who was at Ava's house was suddenly arrested by the police for not taking care of her nationality. After that, in the evening, Ava and Nazan met, and they said their complaints included telling them that their human rights had been violated. When Ava learned that her childminder, whom she considered her mother, had been arrested by the police, Nazan offered her the opportunity to become an informant for her because she already knew the team that was working with Ava and because it meant Nazan would carry out Ava's childminder from immigration. Ava said she knew that she was being suspected by the team. And the scene suddenly changed. The scene shows Ava having met her childminder, while Nazan looks happy and has sex with Toby. After that, it was also seen that Ava asked to return to the team. Five days before the robbery the scene shows a man named Roger, who is the owner of the safest vault company. For the world's conglomerates, so that the conglomerates will keep their wealth in Roger's company. Elsewhere, Leo is with his team, and Leo explains that there are seven tasks they must do to defeat Roger. The first task is at Walt Street 505, and later the SLS car will enter the RF transmitter code into the armored truck. Then Leo's men would use the bicycles to duplicate the code from the transmitter, which he must keep close to the SLS car. The challenge for Stan is that he must get the code before the SLS truck enters the building. The second task is to get into the SLS by taking the freight elevator. The third task, two armed guards with military training, will be in the lobby, later, Stefan will meet Roger, who is accompanied by the head of digital security, Hannah. When the explanation was going on, Leo reminded Bob not to play on the cell phone. When the explanation was done, Leo took Bob's cell phone. The fourth task is then in the hallway stage. Leo presented the hallway with makeshift tools, this task is to ensure the access card is in hand. After it opens, this is the fifth task. Leo's team had to move silently, 
because the biggest problem when the door opened was that in the hallway there was a multimetric biometric recognition unit, that is, the device could recognize a person's steps, so anyone who shouldn't be there would be recorded on camera because it uses an infrared device. The sixth task, namely opening the safe door and turning off the temperature sensor, is besides that only Roger knows the code, and the code is always changed every day. Even so, Leo explained that when everything goes in, the temperature will increase, and when the temperature increases, it's over, all of which means they will go to jail. And then Ava gave them the advice that they needed a back door, and Leo said casually that he would make the back door. Also, Leo mentioned that the thing that was really needed was the software code to turn off the temperature. On the other hand, Roger had already entered the vault, and besides that, Stefan saw everything. Because he was storing his belongings in SLS. The seventh task is to break into the safe and take it, then transfer it to the truck above for an hour. Stefan tries to get Roger to come to a cocktail party in town, but Roger says he has to check his schedule first. The scene moves to Stan, who has returned to base. Excitedly, he explains his success using the bicycle to get the password from the car. In the other place, Roger received a message congratulating him on getting a world-class client, and Roger did not know who the message was from. Then it was seen that Leo's team was preparing something between each other, and Leo intended to go to Roger's place with the intention of tricking the camera and preparing for a facial scan. Also, Stan tells Bob and the others that he needs a gun when carrying out his duties, but the other members don't take it seriously. In the other place, because Roger accepted Stefan's invitation, making his house empty now, it became an opportunity for Leo to get what he needed, and at the headquarters, the team members expressed their wishes when they managed to get the proceeds from the theft. When Judy explains what she wants, Stan mentions the thing that made Bob get angry. But Judy was able to catch Bob while he was in the toilet and pull him out, where he revealed to Judy that Bob had planned to take all of the robbery's proceeds. Moving on to the party, Stefan finally meets Roger. At that time, the client invited Stefan to talk to him for a while. Meanwhile, Leo is still collecting fingerprints at Roger's house. He had seen a photo of Roger's family with his wife. Back to Stefan, Roger was met with two people who asked him to transfer their bonds. They asked to change the bonds into legal goods in a secret way. Roger said that he could not launder the money of $7 billion in a short time, but Stefan assured him that Roger could do this. Then the scene changes and shows Leo enjoying his lunch and trying to call someone. On the other hand, Roger, who had returned to his house, received a phone call from an unknown person, asking for the family's identity and leaving because Roger had previously received an email in which he displayed a photograph of himself. Roger is seen returning to his office after receiving the call and giving Hannah directions to check things out. Furthermore, Hannah immediately did it by asking for help from her friend named Liz. Back to Roger, who was using eye medication. At the same time, Roger got a call asking him for $4.7 million. Shortly thereafter, one of Roger's men discovered an irregularity in the vault security system. Roger just said that this must be corrected immediately. Apart from that, Hannah advised Roger to go see an eye doctor because it seemed that his eye condition was not doing well, so a doctor came to check the health of his eyes, then he was given medicine. The scene changes with Ava getting the job of looking for the back door, but she finds that the alternative way has disappeared. This news made Leo confused about what steps they should take, even Leo thought that the plan would fail if there was no back door. Besides that, Leo told me something that bothered him when he saw a family photo at Roger's house. It became a depiction that Roger had it all, and the revenge plan that Leo was going to do seemed to vanish when he saw that one of his plans had failed. The scene changed, Roger went to a man named Andrew, and he argued that the person who had called and blackmailed him was Andrew. Andrew apparently has a plan that will reveal Roger's evil side to the three dragons, or his current client. Then, when Roger headed to his office, he saw Leo trying to follow Roger. Back at Andrew's place, it turns out that Roger's men were already there and were going to kill Andrew. The scene then shows Roger doing a sauna in a place, and there is already Leo preparing to kill Roger, but Leo cancels his intention because Roger seems to be telling a story in Africa and saying a storm was there. When he heard the word hurricane, Leo immediately realized what to prepare to fix the cage and get away out of the back door. Plus, Judy puts theory into practice with what she's heard. But their plan is full of stakes, because Leo's plan is very affected by the storm, which will occur in the next few days. You can see the look on the team's face was somewhat doubtful about this plan, but they were finally ready for the risks they would face. The scene moves and shows two female FBI officers named Nazan and Toby as if they are preparing to catch one of the most dangerous criminals. Elsewhere, Roger seems to have found an oddity because the position of his watch has changed. Not long after, he got a call from Stefan. 
Stefan found out that he knew Roger's real background, and Stefan said there was no problem with that, so that Roger's worries seemed to disappear, especially when Stefan followed up on his wishes at the party. After that, Roger was seen going to the vault to do some things. And the scene changed to Leo, who was in front of the blue screen and told his team to leave now. 24 years before the robbery an old black man named Leo was seen. At that time, Leo was observing a luxurious house from a distance. After that, he entered the house, where it was known that no one was in it. Let's say Leo is a reliable thief who can break into anything. His intelligence in planning theft and robbery is one of his strengths. Aside from that, two men were seen chatting about their businesses in different locations, the man in the black shirt, we'll call him Roger. Then, not long after, two women were seen flirting with the two men, while Leo continued to carry out his actions carefully and looked calm. But when Leo was busy breaking into a safe, suddenly Roger and his friends came to the house. It was known that Roger and his friends were looking like they were having fun, but they didn't know that Leo was in the house, and when Roger climbed the stairs, he suddenly casually opened the room with Leo in it. However, after being apprehended, it was clear that Leo and Roger were working together. Roger told Leo to immediately finish the burglary, and Roger helped with the process. But soon, when the safe is successfully opened, the man who owns the house will enter the same room. Of course Roger immediately told Leo to secure a position, and when the rich man entered the room, Leo had disappeared. But Leo was not stupid either, he deliberately left a crowbar on the floor of the room. Of course Roger understood Leo's meaning, and when the rich man came out of his room, Roger immediately made a move to find a toilet in that big house, so fortunately the rich man didn't find out what the two of them were doing. After leaving, Roger went back inside and immediately tried to open the safe, which had been tightly closed because Leo was inside. Panic ensued when Leo tried to open the safe from the inside and found it difficult to open, luckily, they managed to take all the treasure and jewelry that were there, and Leo managed to escape from the house. After that success, Leo and Roger met again. They looked very happy with the theft, not forgetting that Leo gave Roger a luxury watch, maybe it was a bonus for Roger. And when finished with the robbery, Leo went back to his house and met his wife, who had just woken up from sleep, consequently, Leo also gave an expensive bracelet to his wife. Shortly, Leo's son came and immediately hugged him very happily. After that, Leo invited his son to eat at a restaurant, and the two of them initially really enjoyed their time together, but suddenly, Leo got a call from Roger. It was known that Roger wanted to invite Leo to commit the next heist, but Leo seems hesitant and prefers to spend time with his family. The scene moves to another place, Leo is seen swimming, and shortly, a woman appears who he knows is a broker for stolen goods, let's call her Ava. Ava immediately asked for the items that had been stolen by Leo to be exchanged for money. Not only that, Ava also had time to give advice, suggesting that Leo divorce his wife so that his profession as a thief could be safer and more comfortable. The scene then moves on to Leo's house. It seems Leo this time is thinking about stopping stealing, at that time, he said that while chatting with his wife, but his wife asked, what would Leo do if he didn't steal? Of course, Leo said he would try to open a repair shop. His wife smiled and thought, if it is not going to be easy, but this time Leo looks very serious about stopping stealing. After the chat, not long after, Roger and his girlfriend came to Leo's house, they apparently intended to have dinner together, and after dinner was over, while playing stick, Roger invited Leo again to rob. Of course, the result was bigger than the previous robbery, but Leo said that if he already wanted to quit this improper job and prefer to make the right business, Roger could not do much, so he had to accept the decision. Shortly, Leo and his wife managed to open a workshop, it seems Leo deliberately rented the place for his small business. Leo and his wife look happy to welcome their new life. Then, after his wife said goodbye to work at a liquor store while carrying their son, Leo, who was alone, suddenly Roger came again to his house, and he absolutely wanted to take part in another robbery. But Leo's decision was final, even though Leo ordered Roger to become another partner in crime, he was completely unable to find one, so Roger chose to stop the robbery plan if it wasn't with Leo. It is also known that Roger, as it turns out, has enough debt, this insistence is what makes Roger have to commit a robbery, but Leo still doesn't agree. On the other hand, Leo's wife was seen working, but the child did not want to be quiet and was pacing back and forth, so Leo's wife told her child to play in another place. When her child was playing, she suddenly saw a drawer that contained air holes in it. Out of curiosity, the child then went inside. Meanwhile, Leo had just come from his wife's place of work, and he was asked to wait for him in the space provided. Besides that, Leo had seen that the place was going to hold a jewelry auction that was very expensive. But not long after that, Leo suddenly heard the sound of his child screaming from a distance. 
Of course, Leo immediately looked for where his child was. It turned out that his child had been taken out of the room by force by his wife's boss. Leo then felt humiliated by the boss and immediately gave the man a warning. When he was about to leave there, suddenly Leo's wife came out, and suddenly the wife had to bear the impact of the commotion. Seeing this, Leo became very angry and held a grudge against his wife's workplace. After yesterday's incident, Leo met again with Roger, now that he is ready to take revenge and will participate in planning the robbery, it was from there that Leo immediately calculated the time and created a robbery scenario. Not only that, Leo also intends to exchange the jewelry for fake ones. The next day, Leo, who was very honest with his wife, of course immediately asked for approval, but this time his wife was a bit reluctant to give him permission, so Leo had to lie to her. The night of the jewelry auction had just begun. It was seen that this time Leo was pretending to be a waiter, while Roger got out of the limousine and pretended to be a rich man who had come to the event. Meanwhile, at Leo's house, his wife suddenly got a call back from her boss, and she then went straight to her workplace again. In no time, Leo immediately took action, starting with breaking down the door of the room where the jewelry was kept. Not long after that, Roger told him that if a customer was heading towards him to save the jewelry that was going to be auctioned, absolutely, Leo should hide. After the jewelry was stored, Leo continued his actions while Roger continued to secure him from the outside. Meanwhile, Leo's wife had now arrived at her office. It can be seen that Leo is trying to exchange the jewelry for fake ones so as not to arouse suspicion. But in the middle of the action, Roger suddenly announced that a customer had returned to the room where Leo was. Leo immediately became very panicked because he needed more time to hide and complete the job. And this time, unfortunately, their action was less fortunate, Leo's hiding place was found out by the guards there, and of course Roger immediately acted to protect him. But there was no other choice at that time other than to attack the guard. After making the guard faint, Leo immediately took all the jewelry without exchanging it, while Roger took the initiative to burn the entire room to buy time, but unfortunately, the fire that was initially small suddenly became large, so that the fire of the entire building could not be avoided. Then, when he managed to get out of the building without being caught, unfortunately, Leo saw his wife's car parked there, and he absolutely had to go back inside to save his wife. In the midst of the growing flames, Leo seemed to have difficulty helping his wife, Roger, who was also there at first, was going to help. But for some reason, suddenly, Roger became evil and cancelled his intention to help. So Leo tried his best to help his wife, who was dying from the fire and was also crushed by the rubble. Shortly after Leo managed to bring his wife to the hospital, he and his child were told to wait, but not long after, Leo suddenly had another visitor, and it was the police who were looking for him, but Leo had also prepared for that, and he had called Ava to protect his child and take his child away. At the end of the scene, Leo must be arrested on charges of robbery. The next morning, after the robbery, the scene begins with Leo, Stan, Ava, and Judy, who are in a small boat. They are seen wading through the sea with a sluggish and tired face. The scene then changed to Leo entering the headquarters and immediately opening a safe, taking several expensive bonds as well as several other expensive documents. After that, the scene continued again when Leo was underwater while trying to get past the iron barrier that locked his legs. Luckily, he was able to get out of the safe trap and immediately came out carrying a bag containing important papers. Then Leo arrived at headquarters and immediately packed up. Leo took all his possessions and intended to leave there because many people, including the FBI, knew their location. But suddenly Judy detained him. Judy also said that the bond papers had disappeared and were not in his possession, even though they all knew that Judy should have received the bond papers and moved them to a safe place. But after opening it, the mailbox box was empty. Stan arrived shortly after, almost making Leo and Judy nervous because Stan arrived at headquarters using Gokar, which meant the Gokar could be the FBI, but Stan quickly cleared this up, if he didn't steal a car, a truck carrying mail. Bonds don't exist with him either, so in his rush, Stan has no other choice but to order Gokar. Meanwhile, it was observed that Roger and Hannah had just arrived at the office where the bonds were supposed to be, but when Roger entered the safe room, he discovered that things had been chaotic, even the entire room was filled with bees. Roger was furious and immediately ordered Hannah to summon divers to inspect the condition of the safe that had been sinking in the water. The CCTV recording has also been deleted since 6 hours ago, so now they really can't find out who the robbers were. Then, not long after, two FBI members came to Roger's office, and Hannah took the initiative to stop them. Hannah, who is known as the head of digital security in that office, immediately came up with the idea that the vault had been secured after the storm and nothing had happened. In addition, she also refused to search Roger's office because the two FBI members did not have a warrant. 
Roger also appeared there and ordered the two FBI members to go back to their headquarters and ask for an order first, because there was nothing they could do. The FBI members went back shortly, and Roger immediately called Stefan, someone who has bonds and uses the services of Roger to secure everything. Of course, Roger panicked and immediately rejected Stefan's call. Meanwhile, two FBI agents are devising a new strategy to locate the robbers first. The FBI wants to target not only Roger but also the robbers, while at Leo's headquarters, they can't stop arguing about who hid the bond papers. Apart from that, Stan, Leo, and Judy also had time to remember if there was anything they had left at Roger's place during the robbery. At first, they were confident, because they were sure they had not left anything there, but Judy suddenly remembered that if Stan always wore glasses at that time, his glasses were not on his head. Absolutely, the glasses had fallen in front of the vault, so Roger's men managed to find them. Meanwhile, the two FBI members who had also been trying to find where the truck that Ava had taken had gone, through CCTV traffic, finally managed to find traces of Ava's truck. They also thought that Ava was confused, looking for a way out to disappear from the FBI area, and it was also known that Ava had been injured by a shot. Roger was confused and tried to collect all the clues that could lead to the robbers, but at that moment Stefan suddenly called him back, and this time Roger had no choice but to pick up the phone from Stefan. Accompanied by Hannah, Roger said that Stefan's safe had been successfully secured. Knowing this, Stefan wanted to check his safe the next morning, so Roger immediately ordered his workers to carry out a security operation so that the office looked normal and was under control. Meanwhile, the FBI, which is still looking for the motive behind the robbery, has managed to find out that Leo's robbery was motivated by his grudge against Roger. Aside from that, Roger recognizes Stan's glasses, so the tracking becomes Roger's target. In no time, Roger could figure out Stan's license plate number. Leo continued to debate who should be trusted by each of his friends on the sidelines of the FBI and Roger, who had sent people to look for Leo and his friends. Seeing Leo, who could not prove that the bonds did not exist with him, Stan was also in a quandary because Judy kept provoking him not to believe Leo. On the sidelines, Leo was asked again by Stan and Judy whether this robbery was not only about money. Then the scene changes, where Stan's wife, who is a seller in a shop, is suddenly visited by Roger's henchman named Carlos. Carlos at that time pretended to be a secret agent from the police, he admitted that Stan was a police informant and was in a state of danger. But it seems that Stan's wife doesn't easily believe in Carlos, unfortunately, Stan's mother screams and says that Stan's location can be tracked via a cell phone search application. Stan's wife had at that time prepared a knife from the shop locker, but suddenly she had to be shot dead by Carlos. Carlos easily found out where Stan was at that time. Back to the FBI, which carried out their mission without the boss's knowledge, the two of them have now agreed to carry out brutal methods by acting without being noticed by their agencies, and they are certain to raid Leo's headquarters. Shortly after morning arrived, Leo and his other friends looked stressed as they thought about the next steps they would take. But suddenly the sound of a truck was heard entering the headquarters. It turned out that it was Ava who had been shot and was in pain. Luckily, when they checked in the trunk of the truck, the bonds were in the box, so they were very relieved when they found out. But on the other hand, Ava also brought bad news, that Judy's wife was known to have died by the side of the road, she just laid there and did not know who killed her. Judy was sad and annoyed because she couldn't do anything about it, so she threw one of the bond medicine boxes, which made matters worse when the box containing the bond certificates turned out to be only one sheet per box. The rest is just colored paper that has been left blank. Knowing this, they fought and blamed each other for thinking that Ava had moved them, of course, the money from their robbery was there, and shortly, they pointed guns at each other. But on the other hand, Carlos has also arrived there and peered at the division between them. Secretly, Carlos began to move with his men. There was a shootout between Carlos' team and Leo's team. Instantly, they immediately worked back together, while Leo was seen leaving that place. When Stan was shot in the ear and caught by one of Carlos' men, Carlos and his team immediately won the shootout. Without much preamble, Carlos asked, where are the rest of the bond papers, while threatening Stan, who would be killed? Seeing that, Judy couldn't bear to tell them that the other papers were in their safe, but after opening Leo's safe, suddenly Leo came out and immediately shot Carlos and his men and died. Not wanting to linger, Leo and the others immediately left the place and left all their belongings there, so they didn't take anything with them when they went to the pier. Meanwhile, Roger and Hannah seemed willing to face this reality, but they still knew very well that they would be pressured by all parties, including investors and the police. Hannah is known to return home to prepare other things before leaving, you can see Hannah's face looking very pleased to see the company that Roger has built, now it will be destroyed, she is infiltrating to destroy Roger from the inside. 
Shortly after Roger went back to his room, the FBI came again and brought official warrants, so Roger was forced to show them the current state of the safe. He also could not avoid it. When asked where the contents of the safe were, Roger only said that the bond papers had been moved to a safe place. Then they wanted to see the safe that belonged to Roger, and when it was opened, unfortunately, it turned out that Roger's safe was filled with water, so Roger was caught by the FBI. Meanwhile, Leo and his team are shown again, and as at the beginning of the episode, they all look very tired and stressed because the bonds have disappeared somewhere. Six months after the robbery, the scene shows Bob, who is still alive and has a heavy wound on his neck. Then he is seen at the FBI office, where Nazan is explaining about the mess Bob made during the Uva Diamond robbery while mentioning the other team. Nazan explained that the mastermind behind the robbery was Ray Vernon, who is a Leo. Leo is famous for being cool-headed, calm, and always on target. He even been involved in several major robbery cases. Nazan believes that if Leo is still the group's mastermind, then in the next four weeks they will try to break into the SLS vault, or the safest vault in the world. Besides that, Nazan also mentions the three victims of the robbery, namely, Cho Young Wu, Stephane Thiele, and Suzanne Grosvenor, who are a trio of dragons or people who have a lot of assets in the SLS vault. The dragon trio has claimed loss insurance, but until now they have been reluctant to talk to the FBI. Nazan also mentions Roger Salas. Roger Salas is the owner of the SLS safe that was broken into, and now he is in prison for a grand theft case. The scene then shifts to Bob, who is visiting the detention cell to meet Roger, but he is unable to speak due to the scar on his neck. He even uses Google Translate voice as a means of communication. His arrival to meet Roger aims to express his anxiety because Bob believes the robbery cost him a lot of money. Even now his wife is kidnapped by his friend, seeing that his fate is similar to Roger's, Bob then tries to borrow $50 so that his wife can return to Bob. Feeling strange, Roger then asks, what did he actually mean by coming? Can Bob change his life after being trashed for 20 years in prison? Bob typed the word that there is one more thing that can change his life again, namely revenge. Roger eventually agreed and gave Bob $20 on the condition that he kill Leo. Because we can see that Leo is currently struggling with his Parkinson's disease, it seems Leo is also planning something, namely making fake passports and ID cards for his team so they can get out of this country. Back to Bob, and he is seen recruiting hitmen at the bar. At first, they refused the offer to join because they saw that the payment given to them was very small. Here Bob explains that they will get money again if they succeed in killing Leo. We heard a very large number, and they finally agreed. The scene then moves, Stan and Judy are seen trying to sell fake expensive wine to their customers, but Stan suddenly cancels it because he feels that his customer has known his lie. They tried to sell the fake wine because the money from the robbery with Leo was not enough. They hoped that Leo would not run away with all the parts of the robbery and that he would immediately send fake passports and ID cards so they could escape from their country. Back to Bob, who seems to be targeting Leo's family members, whom he will show where Leo is hiding. Meanwhile, Stan tries to calm Judy's mind on Bob because of economic problems and because they have been separated long enough. Because Judy is fascinated by Stan's words, she thinks that Bob is not hers anymore and there is nothing to worry about. After moving into Leo's house, Ava suggested that Leo should leave immediately. Worried, the FBI team started looking for him in the beach area, because that's where they lived, and suddenly Leo had seizures. Ava then tried to give him sedatives so he could be normal again. Leo is really worried at this time, but Ava insists on asking Leo to continue with the robbery, namely the bank robbery in Ohio, which can get half a billion dollars. In a different place, Stan is seen pawning a fake diamond ring. Stan hopes that the fake diamond ring will be bought for $1,000, but that person said that this diamond ring is priced at only $500. In this scene, it can be seen that the jeweler has been told that Leo's friends will trick him, but it is not stated who the person is, the jeweler then tells Stan to leave his name and cell phone number, and he will notify him when he or Leo returns. Feeling that he was being tracked by someone, Stan then took the gold ring and left. With that incident, Stan immediately called Ava. While Ava and Leo were alone, Stan immediately told him about himself, which seemed like he was being watched by someone. Stan also asked how Leo was doing, but Leo didn't want to answer. The next day Leo received a letter from Hannah, and at the same time, Ava came and said that the pawn shop had told them where they were now, they then packed up and left the place. Here, Ava thought it was the FBI who had tracked them down. Even though when the FBI came to the pawn shop, the pawn shop cashier was not told where Leo was hiding, and the cashier looked different, not like the one who served Stan when exchanging diamonds yesterday, it turns out that Bob was the one who succeeded earlier regarding the whereabouts of Leo's hiding location. 
Bob and his friends came to the location, and Bob's two friends tried to break down the entrance. This is where the chaos started to happen, here it can be seen that Leo was still hidden, only Ava was the one who resisted the attack, and it ended with Bob's attack from behind, which made Ava faint. After Ava regained consciousness, Bob immediately interrogated her with a Google Translate audio recording. Here, Bob did not immediately ask about Leo's whereabouts, he said that he had visited Zanini and asked where Stan's wife and 100 million of his dollars were. Ava doesn't even want to answer, and in this scene, Bob tries to find items that have been hidden, it turned out that the $100 million had been bought for a gun, which was stored in various locations around the house. When she tried to look for it in the toilet, Ava's grandmother suddenly appeared and stuck an axe into Bob's chest. Here, Bob was still able to hold on and then leaned on the old woman too. Finally, all of the items were discovered, and Bob began asking where Leo was because Ava and his grandmother were silent, before pointing a gun at them. Worried that her granddaughter would die, the grandmother would then call Leo. A few hours later, Leo finally came out of his hiding place and handed over everything he had. After getting his mind, Bob asked, while pointing a gun, where were Stan and his wife? Now Leo told Bob to forget about her because Judy was no longer concerned about him and would never return because Judy believed Bob was dead and Stan had taken Bob's wife. Bob then asked his final question, who would you vote for? Stan and Judy or Ava and her grandmother here Leo can't do anything, and finally Leo mentions the whereabouts of Stan and Judy, namely in South Carolina. Bob then orders Leo to meet Stan. The meeting will take place tomorrow at 10 a.m. at the clam dealer under the guise of meeting with Stan and giving Stan money, and if Bob doesn't call his friend by 10.15 a.m., Bob orders to shoot the woman first so Leo can enjoy it, with a final message, greetings from Graham Davis. Bob immediately went to the coast of South Carolina in a rage. The trip to South Carolina is quite far, and while on the way, Bob is constantly haunted by the image of him killing Stan. The scene changes and shows Stan and Judy getting ready to leave that morning. But when she was about to leave, Judy accidentally saw Bob's car speeding past behind her. Judy felt something was wrong there and believed that Bob was dead. Of course, Judy told Stan to be patient first and asked him to buy some bread far from the beach. Meanwhile, Bob had already arrived at the clam dealer and hoped to meet Judy in person at the appointed time, but after looking around for a long time, he did not find Judy or Stan, instead, he met the FBI, who had managed to surround him. It turns out that the FBI already knows Stan's whereabouts on the beach. Because the FBI had tapped Stan's cell phone when Leo called Stan last night. But here, the FBI did not expect that Bob would also be present. At the same time, Bob's friend, who is looking after Leo, Ava, and his grandmother at home, falls asleep, and they take off the straps using the knife in the pocket, then order to bring the gun to the table. Back on the Carolina coast, this scene shows the same scene that will occur simultaneously, in which the FBI manages to kill Bob and Bob's friends manage to kill Ava and her grandmother. Meanwhile, Judy heard the gunshots and immediately approached Bob's car. Then she took Bob's money bag, and Ava died in Leo's lap. The next day, Leo kept his promise to contact Hannah, Leo told Hannah that maybe this was the right time to call her because he didn't want to worry his daughter, and Hannah showed him her baby. Hannah's child is named Lily, she also asked how Ava was now, and with a heavy heart, Leo answered that Ava was fine. Then the scene moves to the FBI office and shows Nazan being appreciated by her boss because her job has been successful, but Nazan still feels something is wrong because Leo is still nowhere to be seen and has not been found. Then the scene moves to the prison, where Leo is seen meeting Roger and explaining that Bob has disappeared. Leo tells Roger to leave Hannah alone. Then the scene shows Nazan being greeted by someone who asks for directions while shaking hands as a sign of thanks, but unexpectedly, that person seems to stick something into Nazan's palm, and finally Nazan falls in the middle of the road. Meanwhile, when Leo returns from prison, he is followed by an unknown person, and Leo is shot on the spot. Robbery Day In this scene, we will be shown how the bank robbery will take place. The team was ready for action, they had made preparations for the action, and they then left with their car. On the way, Judy gets off early by entering through the sewer door, while Bob and Stan enter through the sanitation room, through the gate that was hacked earlier, pretending to be janitors. Then they attached a stun device to the doorknob when the door was about to be opened by the officer, and finally the guard was electrocuted until he fainted. Leo and Ava started to descend to attack the supervisors there one by one with a syringe gun. Meanwhile, Bob begins to enter another room with the supervisor's keycard. Leo and Ava started to act by activating the sleeping gas using the remote control. Elsewhere, Judy begins placing some lights in the underground sewers, the lights will guide them when the sewer blasting action occurs. 
Then the scene moves to the bank, where Stan and Bob are seen assembling a tool that will release quite a lot of bees. The bees will later be used to manipulate motion sensors. Leo here is wearing an anti-bee costume, as a result, when he walks, the motion sensor doesn't detect it. Leo walks slowly forward while sticking the queen bee in a small box, so that the bees gather at one point. And then he unlocked the safe room's gate, the combination lock for the gate required a face scan, which Leo accomplished by using a geometric mask that resembled Roger's face. In the meantime, Roger was still monitoring the CCTV, it looked different from what he saw and different from what actually happened, because Leo's team had previously hacked the CCTV, so the image displayed was as if nothing had happened. After the face scan was complete, the AUT however, the room was equipped with a temperature sensor, and if the temperature rose, an alarm would sound, so Judy's action, which was right above the safe room, immediately set a chemical bomb trap. The bomb was very sensitive to water, so when the water gutter is opened, the tube will explode, and it will penetrate into the safe room, but this action requires a high level of focus, because if you are in a hurry, just one drop of sweat can cause the tube to explode. Judy took off her earphones, and tension occurred. When the temperature was increasing and this was causing the alarm there to sound, followed by the truck driver above, he was immediately told to go up. Judy accidentally dropped a chemical liquid. Meanwhile, Ava immediately pressed the detonator button, and as a result, they had to run away from there immediately. The sewer water began to wet the room, and finally the room temperature did not detect hot temperatures anymore, while Bob was still worried about Judy's condition because, when he called her, she did not answer at all. They immediately went inside and tried to open the safe again. By using a sound sensor with high sensitivity. Meanwhile, Roger detects that the temperature sensor is off, and Hannah tries to calm him down by saying everything is taken care of. And was trying to restart the system when, feeling anxious, suddenly Roger's son called him for dinner. With this tense situation, finally one vault was able to open, and they immediately took the suitcases of money. Meanwhile, Bob and Stan, who do not know that Ava is part of the FBI, send a message to Nazan and ask, what's going on, and Ava replies, in floor 59 now. Now, after that, Ava plants a bomb on the koi to trick it into not shooting. As a result, Nazan and his colleagues immediately left, and Nazan entered by breaking the glass of the building. With that action, suddenly Bob's cell phone is ringing, showing that the FBI team had managed to find their headquarters. Leo immediately tricked them by saying that if it wasn't our elevator, they wouldn't find us now and should focus on taking the suitcases. When the FBI team arrived at the location, they found no one, and they realized that they had been framed. But before going home, Nazan seemed to hear something inside the wall. Nazan immediately broke the wall, and it turned out that inside the wall, there was a monitor server showing fake CCTV recordings. So Roger, who was at home, felt that his bank was still safe. So, the theft was still going smoothly, but when Roger hugged his son, he accidentally saw that his bank had been robbed. He panicked and immediately went to his bank. Evidently, his car had disappeared, and as a result, he continued to the bank by walking. Then Hannah was ordered to bring all the suitcases to Roger's office, where she transferred all the bonds into a box containing colored cards. When trying to open the last safe, Bob's cell phone notification rang again, showing the FBI team had entered their headquarters. And it was in this scene that Bob started to get suspicious of Leo and Ava, because he felt that they had been betrayed. Unlocking the locker only required one last lock, and then Leo managed to open the safe, and the contents were surprisingly different. Here Bob starts to make a fuss by removing the apple lock, as a result, the alarm there then goes off, and the safe room gate starts to close. Meanwhile, Bob gets his wife out of there quickly and takes the briefcase with the money they have earned. Here, Judy felt strange with Bob's attitude, which suddenly caused a riot. Even Bob had a fight with RJ, and for no reason, RJ reciprocated by pointing a gun at Bob. But because of a sincere wife's love for her husband, Judy was forced to kill RJ. The scene moves to the safe room earlier, they manage to get out of there, but Leo tells Stan to leave first without any reason. Ava becomes suspicious of Leo. While Bob was calming Judy, suddenly Stan came, and suddenly Bob tried to kill him. Bob chases him out of the bank, Stan tries to hide from Bob's pursuit, while Bob continues to scream and look for him, but Judy unexpectedly appears and attacks Bob while choking him unconscious. Here Judy's feelings were destroyed, and with her sadness, she left Bob. Back to Ava, when Ava was about to leave, she accidentally saw bloodstains on the floor, felt that the conditions were not safe, and then immediately left by driving the van. But it turned out that the FBI had come to surround her, Ava fought back and then proceeded to escape. While outside, Ava met Bob, who was already lying down, and she just passed him. 
When Ava's car was seen leaving, it turned out that Bob was still alive. He was trying to breathe with a fairly heavy respiratory tract. To make it easier for him to breathe, he remembered the pen he was carrying, and he immediately stuck the pen shell into his neck. That's how Bob can still live. Then the scene shifts, showing Leo being attacked by FBI members. The fight caused Leo to be almost killed, but Hannah managed to save him. Here Hannah explains that everything she has done has been just for her father, and she decides to return all the bonds to the three dragons. With this, it is possible for them to still have money. In this way, the rich will get richer, and Leo can still survive without having to look at his past. Leo is still standing, wanting to take revenge on Roger for what happened between them in the past. Then Leo apologized to Hannah for all that Hannah had done just for him. Leo decided to climb back down into the waterlogged vault. Carrying the secret key with him, he tries to open the last safe, which he had seen before, and places the fake jewels there. Hoping to be found by the FBI. And the movie is end.